Hey guys, Jerry back with that Theatrically Jerry. I'm doing a teardown video of this 1200 watt fogger. This is a off-brand fogger that you can purchase um, on Amazon. It's considered a budget-friendly fogger. Um, if you haven't already, check out my three-part review on this fog machine. Uh, we're going to tear this apart because we want to see the quality of the components inside of the fog machine. So in order to do that, we're going to have to remove a few screws. There's two up here, and then there's three on the bottom, and two right here, and that's going to take off this side panel so that we can see uh, the components inside of the fog machine. I'm also going to kill two birds with one stone and fix this little inlet tube. Um, it's very loose, so we're going to go ahead and do that. But to save you guys from boredom, I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch me unscrew every single one of these screws. So in order to remove these screws, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. So that's pretty standard. And then it's pretty basic. After that, you're going to just take all these screws out. All right, guys, so you're going to remove the seven screws like I just showed you, and then this entire uh, metal faceplate for the chassis is going to pop off. So you can just go ahead and set that aside so we can take a look at the inside of this 1200 watt budget fogger. Three three watt LEDs are actually a cob, so it's a chip on board and these are just integrated uh, LED boards. So there are three three watts on these. I was surprised to see that they're mounted to this aluminum heat sink, and that is to keep the heat down on the LED diodes. So it's almost like passive, it's, it is passive cooling. Um, it's a passive cooling for the LEDs so they um, do not overheat and it also expands their lifetime um, So I was actually surprised that they included those and so there are three LED diodes on here and this is the main power that feeds them and It's also the R the G and the B or your red green and blue um, inputs so it knows which color you're selecting and all of that's controlled with the uh, PSU board that I showed you so it's not only a power supply board it's also the main control board so there is a uh, chip on there and it does all the processing as well as power all right so I wanted to give you guys a better view of everything so we're going to zoom in a lot um, as stated this is the fluid pump for the fog machine it says that it is type 40 DC B, and it is a variable 110 to 120 volt 60 hertz pump. This is a 18 watt uh, fluid pump. So this is 18 watts. Um, I do like that manufacturers include a label because these pumps go out a lot and they're super easy to replace. Um, as you can see here, this is a brass uh, fitting that goes to the pump so this actually screws on and off if you ever have a fluid leak coming out of your fog machine you can check this sometimes this isn't tight enough and it will leak fluid out and it will be in the bottom of the um, fog machine 
The metal pipe coming out of this is actually going to the heater core, which is over here on the left. You can't see it yet, but I'll give you guys a quick view. This box right here is your heater core, and inside is the aluminum heater for the fog machine. So it's self-contained within this metal uh, housing right here. So this goes to that. And that is where the fog fluid enters the heater chamber, and that is where it gets atomized and comes out the front. Um, as stated earlier, this right here is your feeder line. It's going to the fog fluid container, and it's sucking up your fog fluid and bringing it to the pump. These two wires right here are your power wires. They're a positive and a negative. These um, pumps are easy to replace, and if you have to ever remove one, just flip your fog machine over, and it always has two screws. Um, you unscrew these, and the pump's going to come right off. So it's a very easy replacement. You don't necessarily need to throw your fog machine out just because your pumps failed. They're not that expensive. Um, we do have a board over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is the PSU or driver for the fog machine. It's located on the very back. It's mounted to the metal um, plate that goes around the fog solution um, container. So it's actually mounted to metal and the fog fluid container is protected by the um, metal going around the plastic container. And that's pretty common for fog machines. It's to separate uh, any liquid from getting onto the boards or the other components. So um, this power supply looks kind of weak for 1200 watts. Um, it is a CHX304A board. I do see um, a line in for the main power, which is up here. So you can't really see it because there's a lot of wires, but there is a live and neutral. There's also a live and neutral right here, which you can't really see. You could see the N and the L up here at the top. Part review. And it has a wireless uh, plug that you can supposedly plug a wireless dongle or um, receiver into. And then you can use that is going to the heater. Um, something funny, we were reviewing the uh, fog machine earlier and our three use a long range remote to control this or so they say. But upon opening this, there's not actually anything connected to the wireless receiver. So I find that kind of deceiving to the consumer because there's nothing attached there. So that's a little weird. I noticed that there was a relay switch on the main PSU as well. So fog machines have relay switches. They're basically an electronic on and off switch. Um, they automatically switch from on to off when given the instruction to do so. And the instruction comes from the thermostat that is attached to the heater core. So that clicky sound you hear on your fog machine, that is your relay switch going on or off. And it is programmed to turn on when it drops to a certain temperature and to turn off when it gets to a certain temperature and this protects the fog machine from overheating. We are going to go and turn this over to the other side so we can see the other components on the other side of the fog machine. So we have a couple of things going on over here on the other side of the fog machine. I noticed there's no protection wall for the um, plastic fluid container, so there's nothing over here protecting the fluid from coming out. There is a board here that's mounted to the metal plate. We're going to take a look at that. So this little board right here is actually a wireless receiver. 
um, it receives the signal from the included short range remote control and this is actually the antenna and they're always coiled up like this because um, I guess it gives a better transmission I'm not really sure but um, they're always coiled up like that and there's not a whole lot on here that is in English so I can't really point out anything to you but I can point out that there is a ground, a data, and a 5 volt um, line to this going in and out so there's an out here there's also a really weird chip that's mounted really weird to this board um, it's probably a very cheap component. I've not seen one that looks this cheap, but that is why we're opening this up so we can show you guys what's going on. So every fog machine needs a thermostat and the thermostat basically tells the fog machine when it needs to heat up and when it needs to turn off its heater. So this is a rather interesting thermostat that they've included with this fog machine. I don't think I've ever seen one like this. You usually find them in like commercial appliances for stoves and like water heaters, but that is in control of the fog machine's heater. I'm going to spin this fog machine around to show you exactly what's going on here in the back of it. So the back of that has what looks like a little motor um, it almost looks like a shaft for a motor and I was like that's really weird why would they include that however that's actually a shaft for a knob because this is a variable thermostat and you can turn the heat up or down on it so I think that's kind of a dangerous and also a cheap way of making a fog machine because somebody could come in and turn this and then it's going to be on the wrong temperature and it could cause a fire or it could cause the heater block to melt um, so that's a little weird but this is a $13 thermostat so they're not bad they do use them in commercial appliances it's just a really weird choice for a fog machine so my final thoughts on this fog machine is exactly what I thought in my three-part review, particularly part three, when I discuss whether or not it's worth the price they're asking. So they're asking $80 for this, and I don't really see $80 worth of components inside of this fog machine. Um, I've also never really seen a heating block this small for a 1200 watt fog machine so I'm also kind of doubting that this is even 1200 watts um, it does pump out a lot of fog surprisingly it does it very well um, if you haven't seen already check out the short where I measure it and it does do a fog burst uh, past 10 feet so it's a pretty powerful uh, little fog machine if you're going to use it for just the fog um, the LED lights like I uh, stated earlier are trash so don't buy this if you're wanting to uh, light this up with your LEDs or whatever um, if you're wanting to light up anything it's not for that these are just novelty LED lights um, also the tank the fluid tank on this is very small for 1200 watts because a 1200 watt fog machine is going to burn through a lot of fog fluid quickly so I would have liked to have seen a larger uh, tank for that. Um, this one's rather small. But other than that, this thing is perfect for your house parties or last minute things um, or your Halloween display during Halloween. It's going to be great for that. This is not going to be great for a DJ that's going to rely on um, their equipment because this doesn't look very reliable and the components are pretty cheap inside it's also obviously not for uh, theatrical use or the stage so um, keep this for parties and your Halloween displays only that's my uh, thought on this fog machine